What's up, Taiwan? I'm Stash Butler with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Gu Quanmin, a major figure in Taiwan's democracy movement, has died aged 96. Our reporter Bing Wang looks back on Gu's life and his decades-long struggle to make Taiwan an independent state. A legendary life of political activism comes to an end. Gu Quanming was one of the leading figures in the fight for Taiwan's democracy and a longtime advocate for Taiwanese independence. On Monday, Gu's family said he had passed away at the age of 96. The official reason for his death has yet to be announced. Gu was a fierce critic of the Republic of China, the official name of Taiwan and of its authoritarian leader, Chiang Kai-shek, who ruled the country as a one-party state for more than 25 years. Ku fled to Japan in 1947 after a violent uprising and brutal government crackdown, known in Taiwan as the 228 Incident. Following this, Ku spent several decades living in exile, where he continued to call for Taiwanese independence. After returning to Taiwan in the early 1970s, his lifelong fight continued. Just a couple of years before his death, Ku co-founded and chaired the Taiwan New Constitution Foundation. This organization argued that the Republic of China Constitution should be replaced with a Taiwan one. Before his death on Monday morning, supporters said he had been sick for a long time. While a hero to many, Ku wasn't without controversy. He sometimes made offensive comments about other public figures, particularly women. Past targets of his misogynistic remarks included President Tsai Ing-wen and former Vice President Annette Liu. Despite this, Ku would go on to be an advisor for President Tsai after she took office in 2016. Following Ku's death, President Tsai and other high-level politicians offered their condolences. They said Taiwan had lost an important individual, one that fought hard to help bring democracy in Taiwan. Alex Chen and Bing Wang for Taiwan Plus. In the lead-up to 228 Peace Memorial Day, free speech activists are demanding access to politically sensitive records from Taiwan's past. Yujing Huang reports. After Taiwan's Political Archives Act passed in 2019, researcher Su Qingxuan thought he would have access to a trove of information. Su was researching the brutal political crackdowns which occurred during the White Terror period, and he wanted to build a fuller picture of what happened during that time. But as he began examining documents from the National Security Bureau, he realized that finding out more about this dark part of Taiwan's past would not be so easy. Many documents were like this one, only revealing details about the victims, but covering up the names of those involved in secret police work. Current regulations allow for official information to remain confidential in certain circumstances, like when it relates to national security. But free speech activists say this restricts transparency and only serves to protect those who aided an oppressive regime. They are demanding an amendment to the Political Archives Act, which would declassify old documents. They say that if the law doesn't change, it creates the possibility for more cover-ups in the future. And for activists like Chen Jiaming, the information should be released out of respect for those who were persecuted by the state. Police 
political oppression in Taiwan lasted for decades. It's only in recent years that the country has worked to confront this past through transitional justice. The National Security Bureau says it will try to minimize the limits on its records. But some say that clear lines have to be drawn, and even uncomfortable truths must be recognized. That's all part of being a democracy. Patrick Chen and Yu Jing Huang for Taiwan Plus. And Taiwan's military wants to change the law to give the armed forces more oversight over the media if war breaks out. Jaime Ocon reports. Taiwan's defense ministry is proposing harsher fines and stiffer punishments for a variety of actions that it says would hurt the country in times of war. The military wants to amend parts of the All Out Defense Mobilization Readiness Act. This law is supposed to help prepare the country for a conflict. It not only includes regulations for people to report for military service, but also provides rules for things like hoarding goods and price gouging. But now, the military wants to add greater oversight to the media. Headlines like these that say the Mobilization Act is controlling the media are on newspapers all across Taiwan. If the new changes are approved, it would give the government power over all media reporting on war and emergencies. The new amendments also say that any organization publishing what the Defense Ministry deems to be false information during mobilization could face up to three years in prison and a fine of about 33,000 U.S. dollars. Media groups would also be required to make their resources available for government use. Experts say that in times of war or an emergency, this law is meant to protect the country rather than give more power to the government. Guidelines for the Mobilization Act are divided into two sections, one for peacetime and the other times for war. But the draft amendments do not mention a time limit or what extent the government is able to control media in the event of war. Lawmakers from the opposition Kuomintang, or KMT, are urging the government to outline more clearly what the parameters are. Taiwan's Defense Ministry responded to concerns that the amendments would give the military complete control over the media. It issued a statement saying that the revised draft of the law mainly distinguishes between pre-mobilization and post-mobilization, and that the management of media and communication equipment is to maintain security. It also said that comparing it to martial law is not true. The proposed amendments are not final. Approval from Taiwan's legislature is still needed, which could happen as early as April. People here are waiting to see if the measures can protect the country while also protecting their civil rights. Howard Zhang and Hami Okan for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's government is gathering data on the cost of living for the country's older citizens. That's as Taiwan society ages and inflation puts a squeeze on household budgets. The last time the government carried out this kind of survey was in 1996. It aims to see what's changed since then and what economic pressures older people now face. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, today we leave you the images of giant panda cubs in northwest China's Shanxi province. I'm Stash Butler. Take care and see you next time.